God for him still being able to walk with us. But certainly we aren't worthy, amen? But he still continues to walk with us. When folks seem to be getting on our nerves, he still walks with us. When it seems like all hell is breaking loose, he still walks with us. Amen. And that right there is just a testimony all in itself. Amen. 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 Certainly I do give honor and homage to this great pastor, to this great preacher, the Reverend Ron Rawls. Amen. 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 Oh, come on, y'all can be better than that. You're a pastor of this house. Amen. And certainly where Barack had his queen, certainly mm -hmm. there's a first lady, the Honorable Judge Michonne Rawls, as well. Amen. Certainly, uh, I am privileged to be standing here before you on this morning. Amen. I don't take it lightly. Uh, to our ministerial staff, certainly I thank you for keeping me encouraged and keeping me lifted. Amen. Amen. I got three people here, Reverend Rose. I promise I won't take long. I got three people here that came with me this morning. And I'm um, just so privileged to have them here with me this morning. Uh, my brother in the back, John John, I thank you for coming to be with me this morning. My godmother is here with me this morning. It's a nice fancy hat. God bless you. I love you. But then they say you always save the best for last. Amen. And certainly, uh, you know, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Y'all see where I get these good looks from? Uh, <laughs> Uh, my dad is here with me on this morning, Amen. Um, and I'm so very glad. There's a reason why I still say yes, sir, and no, sir, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, because it's that man right there that taught me at a very early age. You know, I will slap you in the head, son, if, if you don't respect your elders. Anybody older than you gets a yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. He certainly played a drill sergeant in my life. But I thank him for being just that, amen? Right. amen? Certainly, I thank him for doing it because I could be locked up and they would be doing it. But I certainly thank him. Uh -huh. amen. 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 promise I won't be before you long, but there was a, a message from God on this morning. And if you would follow me to the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 15. And we'll commence our reading at verse 25. And there you'll find these words. Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told. And your father has killed the calf we were fattening and has prepared a great feast. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Amen. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, all these years I've worked hard for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. Mm -hmm. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Uh -huh. Yet, <clears throat> yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money, on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the finest calf we have. Uh -huh. His father said to him, look, dear son, uh -huh. you and I are very close and everything I have is yours. Uh -huh. yeah. My brothers and sisters preaches of the gospel from the time that is ours to share today. I want to preach on this particular subject, the after party. The after party. Will you just look at your neighbor and just give them my sermon, the after party? Yeah. Amen. Have you ever been to a party? I'm, I'm talking about one of those really, really, really good parties where it seemed like you didn't want to go home yet. You went and got your hair done. You got your makeup. In. I'm talking to some of y'all. You don't. I know we're in church, but you can testify. You've been to some parties. I'm talking about one of those good parties where the DJ was playing your favorite song, and if you heard Luther Vandross the right way, if you heard some Marvin Gaye the right way, if you heard Ron Isley and the Isley Brothers the right way, you knew how to clap 
your hands, you know how to stomp your feet. You know exactly what to do. For my generation, if we heard taking over for the 9-9 and 2000s, we know exactly what to do in that particular time, in that particular moment. But I'm talking to some of y'all that like to party 24-7, seven, seven days a week, but at the same time, you still know you still got to praise God in spite of. All right, all right. But then if the party got so good, then typically, you know, the parties, and I'll testify, I've been to a couple parties. The parties that typically I go to are the ones that last and happen so good on Friday, they roll into Saturday. <laughs> and then on Saturday night, nobody wants to go home, so we have this thing called an after party. All right, all right. And some of y'all have been to an after party because you would just be coming in this time, Sunday morning, from an after party. <laughs> Come on, I wish I had somebody help me testify. <laughs> And one of my things that I love about this Josh is about the after party is that nobody really wants to go home, but you gotta go home. And if you grew up at 3256 State Road 207, it didn't matter what time you got home, you would still be going to church the next morning. Can I get a witness? Amen. And that's why I want to pick up this particular story. This particular story takes place of the prodigal son, and the prodigal son has went off, and he's done some squandering with money. Simply, he wasted all the money that his father had given him, and he wanted to be a grown man and go out and do grown things and be an adult. So he took all of his money that his father gave him and went and wasted it on other things that he just wanted to waste it on. And there, meanwhile, is an older brother, his older brother, who was just so faithful, so diligent, so loving, so caring to his father. And he stayed home. He wasn't like his, his, old, his younger brother. He just chose to stay home and follow dad's commandments, follow mom's commandments, and not be one of those to just move around from place to place like, like his younger brother was. Because you know, you, you've been there at times when you've been young and foolish. I wish I had somebody right. to testify. Right. And here we find in the text that I want to pick up in, the family is now throwing a party. And the older brother, Brother Ross, has been out working in the fields all day and all night, making an honest living, doing as the father stated. And the younger brother returns home after realizing that what he did was foolish, what he did was dumb. He's living with pigs, eating like pigs, and now it's time for him to come home. And his father was just waiting, constantly praying, waiting for him to return home. And here it says in the text that his father threw him a party. Even though he wasted all of his money, even though he wasted all of his resources, his father still waited on him to come home and there threw him a party. All right. And might I suggest to you, this is where we find ourselves right now. Some of us have tried to come home and some of us are still on our way home and we look for people to throw us a party in spite of everything that's going on, but we can't allow people to dictate when God gets ready to throw us a party because right. when God throws us a party, it's an after party, one that will never end. All right. All right. And here in this particular text, I want to pick up and we find this particular thing. We must first adhere to the cause of celebration. Okay. A lot of people don't understand why this younger brother was able to get a party in spite of his riotous living. They don't understand why he was able to get a party in spite of his wrong living, in spite of his messed up, jacked up living. Why are you throwing this man a party? And the older brother said, now, I've been here with you all throughout the years of my life. I didn't ask you for anything. In fact, when you split the money down the middle, I gave it back to you because this is still your throne. And I went and I worked and I did as you told me to do. But yet this one who cursed your name, who wanted nothing to do with you, you threw him a party. And this is why I want to talk to my perfect Christians real quick. You know, my Christians that seem to have it all together, my Christians that just come in church and have their noses held high and look down at other people. I want to talk to you for a minute. Because it's those Christians right there that seem to kick other Christians out of the church. Well, Brother Preacher, how are you kicking other Christians out of the church? Let me explain it to you and bring this thing full circle. You kick other Christians out of the church simply because you think that you are so holier than thou. I wish I could tell you that preaching up here, I was so perfect and that I had it all together. But I'm just as jacked up as anybody else that walks through the doors of this church. In fact, the church is nothing but a spiritual hospital at best to rehab for people that are still trying to get it together. 
And here in the text, we find that now the older brother has come and he's heard about this great party and he's trying to figure out why are you throwing this man a party when he's so unworthy, he's so undeserving, he doesn't even look like you, let alone smell like you since he's been out living the way he wants to live. He's your own flesh and blood and yet you want to throw this man a party and I'm the one that's been here with you. I'll be your ride or die. I've been the one with you when, when you ain't have nothing. I've still been that son for you. Right. And now you want to throw this man a party. And I suggest to you, here's where we find our second clause. We must first remind ourselves, church, that favor is not fair. All right. A lot of us seem to think that favor is fair, you know, just when God blesses us with things and somebody else didn't get it the same way we got it. But might I suggest and submit to you on today that sometimes you have to remind yourself that just because they got it and you ain't got it does not mean God's not shining down on you. It just means he had to take them a different route. <laughs> And you ought to thank God he didn't take you the route in which they had to go. Because sometimes they had to go through the valley in order to get theirs. Whereas he's just going to bless you because of, I wish I had a church right there that would testify with you. That sometimes you are going to be caught in the eye of the storm. Sometimes it's just best to stand outside the storm and watch somebody else go through it. Yes, my prayers will be with you. But I'm glad he didn't send me through that. I wish I had somebody right there. I'm glad I didn't have to go way down and for him to bring me back up in order for him to bless me. That's why when you pay for experience, it's best to keep the receipt because it's too expensive to pay for it twice. Sometimes we have to thank God for what he didn't allow us to go through. Yes, God, I know I should have been dead sleeping at my grave. Yes, God, I know I should have been locked up. Yes, God, I know I should have gone cuckoo for no-go pus. Yes, God, I know I should be down and out. But I thank you for not taking me that route. You might have not drank the entire bottle, but you took a shot or two. You might have not smoked the whole blood, but you know how to puff, puff, pass. Now, come on, I'm talking to some imperfect people this morning. That's who I teach you. I'm talking to somebody that knows, look, brother preacher, I ain't got it all together, but I can testify that I've been there and I've done that and can't nobody else tell me about what I did because I know I did it. That's who I'm coming to talk to this morning. And here in the text, we find out that his older brother was so perfect, so holier than now. He always stayed around the father, always wanted to do what the father needed him to do. But might I suggest to you that we are just imperfect Christians serving a perfect God. See, we may have not got caught like everybody else, but we've all done some stuff. We've all tried to cover up some things. And if Facebook and Instagram and Twitter had been out of your time, you would have been just cased up and caught up just as well. I wish I had somebody that could testify. older brother. Uh -huh. It amazed me because while his brother was unsafe and unsound, uh -huh. his older brother was safe and sound. Y'all gonna catch that in a minute. Right. His younger brother, who he didn't care anything about, was uh -huh. unsafe and unsound. His Himself, personally, was safe and sound. Well, Brother Preacher, what do you mean? Well, let me put it to you this way. It didn't say in the text that he prayed for his brother, he cared for his brother, he went and looked after his brother. It didn't even say he had a care in the world about his brother. But let me bring it full circle. What I can tell you is that he still had a place to lay his head at night. He still had food on his table and he still had clothes on his back. So that tells me that while his brother is out doing whatever, he's still safe and sound. And it's funny because church people will do you like that. That's why I, I wish I, I had met Christ before I met the Christian. Because sometimes Christians will act like they got it all together. But see, when you have a relationship with Christ, you don't have to worry about how the Christian is living. Just as long as you are lined up with how you should be living. I wish I had somebody with that all together. so-and-so is living, what brother so-and-so is driving, and we let that be the perception as to how a Christian should be living. Well, I stop by to tell you the only perception you should be looking at or perceiving is your own, because it's till this day that you learn and realize that God is still using you, that
that you'll learn truly what being a Christian and being Christ-like is all about. I, I, that's, that's why I can't, I can't get so caught up with Christians that are too blessed to be stressed, too annoying to be disappointed. I, I, I can't get caught up in stuff like that. Christians like that miss me because truth of the matter is I don't wake up every morning with Jesus on my mind. I'm just talking to myself. But hey, you can testify. Truth of the matter is I don't always get in my car and bump Kirk Franklin. Sometimes I need to listen to Migos. Sometimes I need to listen to Drake. I'm talking to that person that you can testify and understand. Yeah, right. brother preacher, I'm living on the fence. But guess what? I still serve a perfect God. All right. And here's what really captivates my attention, Reverend Ross. Uh, the brother, when his younger brother comes back home, Reverend Williams, it didn't say that his older brother even ran to him to hug him. It didn't say that his older brother opened him and welcomed him with open arms. It didn't say anything like that. It just said that he stood in the field. Uh, yeah. Wondering why are we having a celebration? And it says he called one of the servants, and one of the servants came and informed him, Your brother who was lost but now was found has returned. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now we're throwing him a party. Uh -huh. Might I suggest to you that sometimes jealousy is nothing but a green eyed monster that's staring most of us straight in the face. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's that thing called jealousy that will cause us to go to, to our graves with pride, envy, and everything else, knowing that we should have said something else to fix the issue. I never understood how Christians get so jealous of other Christians. Because if we serve the same God, I know the same God that blessed you is soon going to bless me. Is there anybody that can tell me that if God is in the neighborhood and he's blessing you, it's sooner or later he's going to stop by my house and bless me too. So envious and they get so jealous of everybody else. I can't keep up with the Joneses because I ain't got the Joneses money. But guess what? I know God is still blessing me. Guess what? I know I still got life, health, and strength. I know I still got food on the table. My lights are still on. Is there anybody in the end of the that can help me preach right now? I understand that he blessed you one way, but guess what? My way is going to be totally different. Well, why is your way going to be totally different? Because we serve an omnipresent God. That means he's everywhere at the same time. And if we serve an omnipresent God, that means he's big enough to bless me 30,000 different ways than the way he blessed you. Is there anybody that can testify? I don't want my blessing the same way he gave it to you because the way you got it is not the way I want to get it. The way I want mine is, is delivered perfectly packaged for me. First class. And here's what I want to talk to this morning. This morning, I come to find out in this text that while his older brother was standing in the field, it says that his father ran out and had a conversation with him. And I can only imagine, Reverend Williams, how that conversation could have went. But in the text, it says that he begged him to come to the festivities. And my I suggest to you that one monkey, Reverend Rawls, don't stop the show. We, we still going to party. We still going to have this celebration with or without you. But I'm begging you. But Brother Preacher, why is he begging him? Perhaps because it's his brother. Perhaps because it's his own flesh and blood. Perhaps because they share the same last name. And that's why I want to put a pen in something right there and talk to somebody right there. Perhaps your biggest haters, your biggest adversaries aren't the ones as far uh, away from you, but perhaps they're the ones that's so near to you. The ones that share your last name, the ones that share your same bloodline, the ones that even live at your residence. Those are your biggest haters. That's why I love, I love sometimes when I drive in the car and on the passenger side of a car, if you look in the rearview mirror, it says, uh, objects in this mirror may be closer than they appear. But I might suggest and submit to you that sometimes your haters may be closer than they actually appear. We, we don't understand, well, my, my, my haters over here, you know, we said we got haters over here, haters over there. No, you need to worry about the haters that are in your own circle. The same ones that are so envious of you, the same ones that want what you got. Those are your haters. And, and, and here's what I've come to find out in, in this text. It didn't say that his brother decided to even go into the party. It just says that his brother sat outside, and I can imagine him, he had his arms crossed. <laughs> What I need to go and see that Negro for? What I need to go in there for? 
you praising somebody that's already threw away your money and now you, we, we're stuck with this and we're stuck with that. What I got to go in there and welcome him with open arms for? That's the same one that cussed you out and cursed your name, took your money and left. And you want me to go in there and celebrate with y'all like everything is all right? Might I suggest to submit to you that sometimes if other people don't praise you, you need to learn to praise your own self. If somebody else don't throw you a party, you need to learn to have a party all by yourself. If other people don't praise your name, you need to learn to praise your own name. And is there anybody in here that can testify? Yeah, I don't need your praises and applauses. I can clap for my own self. That's why I heard him when he said he put a clapping in my hands and dancing in my feet. Yeah. Because sometimes we get so caught up in how other see us and perceive us that we miss how we should be perceiving and looking at ourselves. We get so cased up and caught up in what they think about us that we miss what we should be thinking about ourselves. That's why I never understood people that go through depression and, and low self-esteem. It's called self-esteem for a reason. Because I'll lift my own self up. Even if you don't lift me up, I can do nothing myself. I don't need you to tell me I'm loved because the word says that I'm loved despite of what you think about me. And here's where I've come to find out. It didn't say that the party stopped Reverend Rawls. It didn't say that everybody came to a halt. It didn't say that everybody decided to leave the party because the older brother chose not to come in. In fact, the text doesn't say anything about the party coming to a cease at all. But what it does say is that the party continued. And that's why I want to talk to somebody right there. Is there anybody in here that will help me keep the party party continuing? Well, how are we going to keep the party continuing? Let me encourage you and tell you, there's a man by the name of Jesus that chose to die on a cross for me. And that's why I'm going to keep the party going. I told you I wouldn't be wrong, but watch this. There's a man by the name of Jesus that chose to take nails in his hands for me. That's why I'm going to keep the party going. He chose to take nails in his feet for me. That's why I'm going to keep the party going. He chose to hang on Calvary for me. That's why I'm going to keep the party going. He chose to come down and take up a borrowed tomb. That's why I'm going to keep the party going. Do y'all see where I'm going? Is there anybody in here that will just keep the party going with me? Because I know I'm imperfect and I know I'm jacked up and messed up, but he still died for me that I might keep the party going. And I wish I had five of y'all. I'll make six to testify that the party going to keep going with or without you. I wish I had somebody right there that would help me preach this. Celebrate us. Uh -huh. And when other people don't scream our name, when other people don't applaud our name, 
But guess what? I'm going to keep the party going because I know he still is keeping me. And I don't know how to keep myself. He still fight for me when I can't fight for myself. He still shows up. That's why the program says he may not come when you want, but he's always on time. And I'm so glad he's always on time because today we celebrate a man that goes above any other. Thank you. 